Okay, so this is the third unit of the files topic for Phys 2320 Computing 2. And again, for lead students, the Jupyter Notebook that um, this video is derived from um, is available both as a notebook and as a PDF uh, from the Minerva module. So the focus of this unit is going to be dealing with metadata in files. So first of all, what do we actually mean by metadata? So generally metadata is data that describes data. Um, so for example, um, the metadata for a file on a disk would involve things like its name, the directory or folder that's in, when it was created, when it was last modified, when it was last accessed, who has the rights to read it or to write to it, which application created it, um, what format it's in and, and so on. For uh, the sorts of data files that we're interested in, however, the, the metadata that uh, we're interested in is actually that describing the data that's inside the file. So it's the um, information that tells you what this data actually means. So that might be, for example, when it was recorded or what the files and the columns, uh, the, the rows and the columns of the data file mean, uh, what the other settings are that the uh, simulation or the experiment uh, was using when it was recorded. Um, all this sort of information um, about uh, how to interpret and understand what this data, what the actual numbers are telling you about. And this is all potentially useful information, particularly obviously if you're dealing with uh, lots and lots and lots of data files where the only way you can tell them, them apart from each other is by what the metadata tells you about that file. So um, even if we don't want to go and uh, necessarily uh, read and interpret that metadata, we still want to be able to go and work out where it is, how big it is, so we can avoid reading it and just concentrate on reading the, the data. So when you look at a file, you want to go and ask um, some questions about it. And, and as we said in the unit one, it's always a good idea to actually open up uh, an example of a file you're going to plan to go and work with in a normal editor and just see what's there and how it's how it's set out. So the sort of questions you want to ask about the metadata are, well, first of all, is there metadata there at all? Um, remember, even column headings are a source of metadata because they, they tell you about how to interpret the numbers. Um, is the metadata located at a particular place in the file? So is it at the start of the file or at the end of the file? Um, is there anything to go and tell you uh, that which lines actually have the metadata in them? Are there markers that say, hey, this is the start of the metadata, and then, hey, this is the end of the metadata, or this is the start of the, the numerical data? Um, or is it alternatively maybe that there's a fixed number of lines somewhere in the file that's the metadata? This is typically less common because, of course, the problem if you have a fixed number of lines is that um, you can't then have an infinitely extensible amount of metadata. If your uh, program decides it needs to record some some more metadata about your data or different metadata, then your file format might not allow that if you only have a fixed number of lines. So generally speaking, you don't tend to see that. And so a good kind of working approximation is that only assume it's a fixed number of lines of metadata if you really have um, no reason to, or if you really have good reason to suppose that that's the case. Otherwise assume that it isn't of a fixed size. If you're going to need to go and pass that metadata, then clearly you want to go and look at how the metadata is actually being presented at you. So very frequently you find that metadata uh, <coughs> takes the format of um, some name or label and then the value. So um, you know that might be the creation date and then a date or the uh, temperature that an experiment was running at and then a value of the temperature or the name of the user and then their actual username. Um, so this kind of data where you have it um, accessed or, or understood by uh, some kind of label is basically what you really want to be storing in a dictionary. So it's very typical to end up putting your metadata into a dictionary um, as you read the file, if that's what you're gonna have to go and do. So um, we're gonna use the, the techniques and some of the stuff we learned in units one and two um, to go and try and have a go at processing this data. And this is the um, the start of the data file that we're going to uh, work with as an example. And so you can see here that there's a, a line that has header in square brackets that looks like it's probably telling us that this is the start of a header. 
there's then some, in this case, three items of metadata, which seem to have a label and then a colon and then a number. Um, and then um, there's a, a, a line uh, uh, with a data in square brackets. And then it looks like we've got the um, column headers and then the, the columns. So the questions we want to go and ask, or the, the answers to the questions we want to ask about this is, well, first of all, is there metadata? Yes, there is metadata, including column headers. Where's the metadata? It's at the start of the file before the numerical data. Um, is there a marker that shows us where the metadata is and where it ends? Yep, square brackets header is where it starts and square brackets data is where it finishes. Well, except that obviously we're gonna then have to read one line of column headers after that. Um, the fact that there's markers there implies that it could potentially have more lines than we've got. So again, um, it looks like we should assume that we're gonna have to work with a, a variable number of lines of data rather than assuming a fixed number of lines. Um, and then in the header itself, when we look at the, the, the uh, metadata values, it, it does seem to be a label colon value. So um, there's a way in which, and it's a numeric value, so there's a way in which we can understand that data. So that's really giving us all the information we need in order to then go away and think about how to write code to go and process that data file. But again, as I say, what I think is a good idea to be doing is to start off whenever you're looking at a data file to open it up in some kind of editor and see what's there and then run through this sort of set of questions to work out what it is you're going to have to deal with. <laughs>